This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, let's talk about uh, the stretch you're on here because this is, I don't know, super fascinating to me. We start on January 4th against Bruno San Martino. The next day, we're wrestling Dick Murdoch. Two days after that, we're wrestling Dr. Death Steve Williams. I don't think anybody has ever wrestled those three guys in a row like that. Maybe, but you, that's got to be some trivia for somebody. But Bruno <laughs> Jr. and then Dick and then Dr. Death back to back to back. Uh, yeah, that's tough. Nobody did it and lived to talk about it. Yeah. I'm sure. Right. You know, one, one little bit of, uh, history and, you know, since we're going back and, you know, we're, we're collecting some of the stuff that we might've skipped over the first go around with the podcast, uh, a little bit of a trivia fact, Steve Williams and I started exactly the same time. He was just starting in the business at that time too. You know, and Bill Watts was sky high on Doc, as he should have been. I mean, Doc was a beast. Football, when you wrestle in college, especially somewhere like Oklahoma, and you play football too, you're special. You know, Mike Rotundo is one of those athletes. You're special. To excel in two sports in college, it's incredible. Um, So Doc, you know, was just, man, I mean, when he scooped you up, it made you feel like a little baby. And, uh, Dick Murdoch was as good, which I've said before, as he wanted to be that day. If if he was in the mood to entertain, he was a hell of an entertainer. If he wanted to go out and play it straight, he was a hell of a wrestler and, and a tough guy. And uh, that's a pretty good three-day stretch. You're 100% correct on that. So the next day, though, as we said, uh, after the Bruno Jr. match, you're doing TV, and it's with Dick Murdoch here. That's a quick effort. Two minutes, 46 seconds at the Irish McNeil club in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, Dick Murdoch, captain redneck. We've talked about him a little bit before. Did you ever have any, uh, interesting drinking stories with him? Uh, you know, I, I never went out with Murdoch, uh, but I heard all the stories and he was one of those guys that, uh, Whoever he was traveling with, he would be the passenger and he would be the bartender unless there was another guy in the back seat. But, you know, uh, it would be a case of beer a night. You know, he was one of those guys that he would stop in, buy a case. And if it was a 200-mile trip, he would probably drink most of it. If it was a 300-mile trip, he would probably drink all of it. And uh, telling the stories he was just one of those guys that was so fun to be around that once he got drinking and rolling and we're going down the road and you're developing that friendship and that camaraderie and, you know, it just, uh, he was just fun to be around. I've heard that, uh, Coors light was the beer of his choice to the point where he was some sort of like unofficial spokesperson. Bruce has almost joked that, he had like a card he carried in his wallet where he didn't pay for cores or some such nonsense. Well, I'm sure he didn't pay for anything anywhere, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he didn't pay the traditional four cents a mile trans. I'm sure he didn't buy the beer, but you know what? I'll, I'll, I would probably say, let me, let me retract that. I bet you Murdoch bought the beer for whoever was in the car, but he didn't pay no trans. He never picked up a dinner meal, anything of that, but where it was in his wheelhouse, if there was four guys in in the car, I would bet you Brent Murdoch would buy a couple of cases of beer and pop for that. Just knowing him. Let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if it's a matter of how much save with Conrad.com. Uh, you also had Mr. Wrestling Two team up with Junkyard Dog to beat you and your partner Don Bass, not Ron Bass, but Don Bass from West Memphis, Arkansas. Uh, he wrestled as the Punisher and the Scorpion and the Rock and Roll Phantom and Assassin Number Two and the Boston Strangler, but not a name a lot of our listeners are probably familiar with. But Lord, he wrestled a long time. What can you tell us about Don Bass? I don't even remember, but I know Ron and Don Bass were a name 
on the smaller circuit, you know, I say smaller circuit, Tennessee, I'm sure they worked for Continental. I'm sure they worked, uh, you know, plenty of territories with all those gimmick names he had to them. And I'm sure that particular day he's looking around going, who is this jabroni partner that I have for sure? <laughs> hey, Big Daddy, you got to get excited about saving people money. Woo! Woo! Let's save with Conrad.com. You know, this is a weird question to ask, but um, do you have any time for social at all while you're working for what? It's like, you know, these days, of course, you know, the. Uh, <laughs> The, the guys who are hanging out after the matches who want to meet the wrestlers, well, they look like me and Stan. Uh, but back then, I assume there were some some ladies who thought, man, look at that TV star. and He's young and an athlete and in good shape, and he's famous. I need to hang out with that guy. Did that exist in the Watts territory? We never hear about that in the Watts territory. Well, here, here would be, here was my extent of it. Jim Duggan asked me to go to a bar that was, over on the side of town and not too far from where Tim and I lived, which was again, you know, the cops were out buddy in Louisiana. Uh, it was called Jim beams and it was a cowboy joint and Doug had asked me just out of the blue one night. Hey, you know, it's Tuesday night. I can't believe it, but I don't have interviews first thing in the morning, it was like his first time being off interviews or something. And I didn't have to get, cause the guys that had interviews the next day in Shreveport had to leave, uh, right after the show and drive on to, to Shreveport, either that, or you had to get up and leave at four in the morning. So you just left after the show. So it didn't leave a lot of time for partying, but he said, Hey, you know, I don't, I don't have to be there until TV tomorrow night. So, hey, you want to go down to Jim Beams? And, and I got introduced to Jim Duggan, Jack Daniels, an ice cube or two, fill up the glass, and that was it. I was a beer drinker. In about an hour, he had me cockeyed. So I, I got to talk to Jim and found out, you know, a little bit about his career and him playing football, and pro ball, and and just just a really a super guy, man's man. One of those guys that, uh, you know, when he told you something, you could believe it. But in those days, I wasn't worried about partying. I was just worried about getting that car heading to the next town and or, or getting heading back home. And it was business all the way because you can't just, you know, punch in a bunch of hard drinking when you're trying to really learn something. Yeah. You know, it just, it gets in your way and it really does. And for those five or six months, I was just trying to learn how to wrestle and be presentable and, uh, you know, get a foundation, which would, you know, help carry me forward for the rest of my career. That, that was my precedent. Even though I was a young guy and single, it, it wasn't high on the priority list. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.